The huge Greek squadron was heading for the Trojan shores. Thousands of Greek warriors wished to achieve glory in front of the mighty city gates. On the beach, Hector, the Trojan prince, commanded the royal army on behalf of his father, King Priam. They aimed to push the Greeks back into the sea, but they were not prepared to face an army of that size. The ships of the Achaeans had already reached the beach. Although it was a great honor to be the first to invade Trojan lands, the Greeks hesitated, for a prophecy said that the first man to set foot on Trojan lands during the war would also be the first to leave for the kingdom of Hades. Odysseus realized that something had to be done quickly, so he threw his shield onto the sand and jumped on it. Without touching the Trojan sands, the king of Ithaca asked his compatriots to disembark and conquer the beaches before Hector's army was reinforced. Odysseus was running from the arrows fired by the Trojans, and his courage persuaded the men to disembark. Protesilaus, son of the old king Iphicles, was the first Greek to set foot on the beaches of Troy. Protesilaus filled himself with courage and led his men to conquer the beach. He advanced and defeated several Trojan warriors who stood in his way. But his enormous bravery brought him face to face with the mighty Hector, the champion of Troy. The two heroes measured their strength, but Protesilaus would fulfill the prophecy. Hector took his life, and Protesilaus was the first Greek to fall on Trojan soil. Achilles and his army of Myrmidons attacked the left flank of the enemy army. The superiority of the warriors of the son of Thetis made the men of Troy tremble. But Achilles soon met his first great challenge. The warrior's name was Cycnus, a mighty demigod son of Poseidon. It was said that he could not be killed with a spear or sword, arrow or stone. He was practically invulnerable. Achilles felt pleased to duel with a foe who could match his abilities. The son of Peleus hurled his spear with all his might against Cycnus's chest, but the spear bounced off the demigod's bronze breastplate, which was given to him by Hephaestus, the lord of the forges. The son of the lord of the seas also threw his spear, which was blocked by Achilles. The force of the throw was so great that it went right through the shield. Achilles took his sword and advanced against the Trojan ally, but the opponent grabbed the sword with his hand and responded with strong headbutts. The leader of the Myrmidons was stunned, while Sickness advanced with his club in hand. The son of Poseidon was ready to smash the head of the champion of the Achaeans. Suddenly, Achilles anticipated the deadly attack with a blow with his shield. Taking advantage of the enemy's disorientation, the hero leaped onto his back and initiated a stranglehold. The strong Cycnus, already strengthless, bent his knees before the great power of Achilles' arms. The demigod died and would not be the first great warrior to fall before the mighty Achilles. Hector, realizing that he did not have enough numbers to contain the horde of invaders, ordered his men to retreat and take cover behind the walls. The Greeks celebrate their first great victory against the Trojans. The conquest of the Trojan beaches was strategically important to the campaign, and their victory was accomplished with few losses. A large funeral pyre was erected to honor Protesilus, the brave warrior who was the first Greek to set foot on those lands on behalf of the army of the Achaeans. He would be the first of many to die on the battlefields in the name of Greek honor.